Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are taking a look at some of the upcoming changes to the UI in Blender 2.8. Now I gotta warn you right up front, these are all very early alpha changes. So first off, what you see may not make it into the final product, and we may experience some hiccups or crashes or problems. Of course, this is early alpha software, nowhere near ready for production. So do keep those things in mind. Now I know when you're talking about UI, especially when it comes to the Blender UI, it's a very sensitive subject. Some people love the existing UI, some people loathe the existing UI, some people want to see change, some people just like despise change, and I don't know where you fall on that spectrum, but do keep an open mind. This is early on, and of course, you can solicit your feedback to the Blender development team if you love or hate what they are doing. So without further ado, let's jump right in and take a look at some of the changes that have happened. Uh, if you're interested in following along at home, uh, you can go to builder.blender.org and download the version I'm working on. And this is actually one of the first versions that I've been able to run of 2.8 that hasn't been completely crash-tastic. Now, if you're also interested, one of the major improvements in Blender uh, 2.8 is also the uh, EV uh, real-time render. I covered that in a previous video and I will link that at the end of this if you're interested in learning that. So without further ado, welcome to Blender. You'll notice there are quite a few changes. Immediately you'll see in the UI you've got things like rounded corners, rounded edges, uh, but for the most part it looks the same until you come and look over here at this left hand side and then you see a pretty profound change. What they've done is they've changed out and they've added icons to all of your menus. And the cool thing here is as these change, as this changes in size, they change in size. I'll show you what I mean. Another thing that we've got here is you've got your mode switch right up here. Now, I'm not sure I like this uh, bar's use of space. It changes a little bit dynamically, but it seems like a lot of space being dedicated to uh, very little at this point in time. But uh, you can switch your different modes here. Now, do keep in mind all your existing hotkeys still work exactly as they are. So if you're not a mouse user, you're really not affected in the slightest by this change. You can still, you know, control tab to switch between modes, etc. But you'll notice when I'm here in edit mode, we've got a number of different options showing on here. So you've got your translations, etc., uh, your various different operations that you can perform. Uh, and there's these rather large icons beside them. Now, theoretically, those icons can be made smaller, but I didn't find the setting to do so. But what you'll notice, if you actually grab this guy right here and you shrink it down, it collapses into a two-layer icon list. Uh, it's the same stuff, it's just got no text label attached anymore, so raw icon form. And then if you make it even smaller, you actually get one large scrolling list of the icons available. So if you find this bit of the interface way too big, you can uh, collapse it down and work with just icons. And of course, you can always um, hide this just like you could before by hitting the T key. And of course, you've got your plus key to expand it back out. So nothing in that way has changed. It's just the presentation here has changed. But there are some functionality changes that are going to have a big impact on things. And I actually really like them. Now, the first one is things have been switched to a toggle mode. So for example, here, if I go, say, I'll go into face selection mode here and I'll select this top face like so. So now if I come in here and I want to do something like a bevel, this bevel is now in fact a toggle, not a straight up bevel. Now you'll notice as I select it, we also got a mesh options uh, menu comes into this dynamic bar at the top, and that changes based off of what you select. Uh, but with bevel selected, now I am in bevel mode. So if I come up here, it will automatically perform a bevel, and then another bevel, and so on and so forth. Same with, uh, say, extrusion. So if I click here, and then I extrude, oh, I should, sorry, just a sec. Let me just select one. So I'm in extrusion mode with the single face selected and it'll extrude once. Well, it's still selected, click, extrude again, 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 again. So now it's like a toggle for toggling the tool on and off. And I actually really like this. I think this is a great improvement. Uh, now, don't worry if you're a keyboard warrior, E key still does your, um, your extrusion that way, and it's not a toggle, it's a one and done type functionality, just like it's always been. So this toggle kind of setting for the buttons is only going to apply um, to the mouse-based UI. Now another thing you've noticed here is there's little drop downs to some of these guys, and this is also pretty cool. So you see here, we can now drop down and select multiple tools. So in this case, I can do extrude individual, so let me select, um, couple of faces like so, and we're in extrude mode. So now when I select them, they're going to go out accordingly. So they've got multiple tools are hidden down, hold down to select the different options, and that's where they're available. So like-minded tools are um, collapsed down into within a single button. For the most part, I think the, 
I, I really need to see them add a toggle for the size of the icons. I think these icons are absolutely huge on this default form, but for the most part, I like this functionality. Um, I like their choice of icons. I like the aesthetic of it. Uh, I like the way that it performs in, as from a workflow. I really like the toggle. It will change the way you do your workflow, especially if you are not currently uh, a keyboard heavy worker. Um, I think it will make Blender on the whole more accessible. So I think this is definitely a good thing. Now I'm gonna dive into these menus. These are obviously uh, new menus. Some of this is to do with the real-time render, etc. But for the most part, things have stayed pretty consistent down here. There have been some changes to the timeline. I'll cover them when we get closer to final release. But this is mostly what I wanted to show you today is the new UI functionality. Now another thing you may notice in this guy is at the top here. And I saved this for last because this is the most uh, crashy part that I've noticed. But they've also added in, so before this used to be a drop down, you'd switch between your different modes. And to be honest, it was a little clunky. You could click the little plus to the side and it would create a new one, kinda. Like the, the way of switching between different viewport styles was a little confusing before. Now it is actually a tabbed based view. So you click on the plus, it will add a new workspace. So if I was doing animation, and hopefully this doesn't crash, I click, boom, it crashed. All right, so that is one of the downsides. Again, we are in 2.8, very, very early alpha stuff here. But what that theoretically should have done is created a new tab, uh, and then you've got multiple workspaces to work on. So you could create an animation tab, a modeling tab, or five modeling tabs if you have different views that you like. And I think that that tab-based view, having them go across the top like that, is much more smooth and elegant than the old way of basically that weird hybrid drop-down that used to be at the top. But as you can see from this demonstration, that function functionality is a little crashy. And again, that is actually kind of a good thing that it happened because I do want to remind you once again that this is purely an alpha release. But that's it for now. So there's some pretty cool changes coming in Blender's UI. It's definitely going to be more accessible. I think a lot of the diehards are going to hate it. Uh, there are people that are just going to despise for the Fisher-Price icons or whatever they're going to condemn it for. But personally, I'm actually pretty cool with it. What do you think? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of that toggle functionality? I think that is the big win in this. I think uh, the ability, a lot of times you do extrude, 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 extrude. It's nice to see it in a mode like that. Or are you going to find that confusing and clunky and in your way? And then one final time, again, this is an alpha, but if you are interested in jumping in, uh, do check out the link down below where you can download a current version for your uh, platform of choice. They're being released very consistently, so um, you know maybe it won't be crashing by the time you download it. And also, as I mentioned very early on, one of the biggest features of Blender 2.8 is the real-time uh, viewport technology EV. Uh, I will actually have a link at the um, probably up on screen in about five seconds that you can click to check out and learn more about that. So Blender 2.8 is shipping up to be a huge release. Uh, hopefully most people are going to like it, but I know UI changes are always controversial. So I'm going to be interested in hearing what you guys have to say in the comments down below. All right, that's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.